What's up, Gator Country? Pull yourself out of bed, shave that beard. Football season's back and we're ready to go. For Richard Johnson, Nick Delatore, GCTV. Uh, we're sitting here in front of the swamp. Gonna give you a little preview and break down some matchups for you. Uh, Richard, let's start with Florida on offense. We know they want to run the ball. Who has the advantage, Toledo, Florida, when Florida runs the ball? It's got to be Florida running the ball. Toledo comes and they're going to bring four new defensive linemen, uh, green, wet behind the ears defensive linemen, and Florida's going to try and do their power game. The extent of running in between the tackles will remain to be seen. You know, there's no Matt Jones, and 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 they might not be able to go through the tackles as much with Mac Brown, uh, maybe as they'd like to, but they still will have an advantage in the run game. It'll be very interesting to see how Clay Burton does in blocking at the tight end position. Position. That's something that wasn't there last year a lot with Jordan Reed. He just wasn't really a blocker. He's definitely more of a receiver. So it'll be interesting to see how Jordan Reed steps into that uh, that tight end role and, and blocks, as well as catching down the field in, in the vertical passing game because uh, Clay Burton is not that great of a, uh, a receiving tight end. Um, one of those linemen that you're talking about just turned 18 last Sunday. So not only are they inexperienced, but they're very young as well. Uh, this is not the kind of environment that you want to have your first college experience in uh, if you're on the opposing team. Uh, I have to agree with you. I think Florida, even without Matt Jones, Florida's going to pound the ball. Um, it'll be nice to see what Tyler Moore can do at right tackle. Very excited to see what Max Garcia can do. We've seen some very good things out of him in practice. Uh, so I, again, got to Tip the, uh, tip the cap to Florida there in the running game. What about when Toledo runs? They use a spread, uh, a spread offense, but that term is so broad these days. You've got the kind of spread that Urban Meyer ran here at Florida where it's a lot of run, a lot of run, a lot of run. You've got a Texas Tech, Texas A&M spread where you're trying to throw the ball 50 times a game. Uh, but Toledo's really balanced. They only ran the ball 53% of the time, so you know, that's almost a coin toss. What, uh, what about when Toledo runs the ball with Bernardo? Um, with David Flewellen. Well, when Flewellen runs the ball, you're going to get a guy that's a consistent thousand yard back. And and if if Toledo can spread the ball with the passing game and then hit some things up the middle, they can get Florida out of position. They can do some some fake end arounds and some some kind of window dressing to get Florida a little bit spaced out and create some running lanes that they'll be able to run through. I think they'll be able to run. Uh, good I don't well I should say I don't know how effective it will be and I don't know how much production they'll get from it on a, a kind of a total game basis but they will get some seams in the run game and they'll get some big chunks of yardage at times especially with the interior Florida's defense being kind of shaky yeah, you talk about that, losing Omar Hunter, losing Sharif Floyd, losing Jelani Jenkins, losing John Bostic. There are talented players filling in those spots. Uh, we just haven't seen them do it yet. We, yeah, know we just don't know. We just don't know what we're getting from those guys uh, on a 12-game on a, you know, basis. We know Florida's going to get after the passer, but we need to see them do it and see how they're going to stop the run. Uh, all right, moving on to when Toledo is throwing the ball. When Toledo's throwing the ball, they've got a guy in Bernard Reedy who is really their all-world kind of guy. Uh, and a uh, senior quarterback in Terrence Owens who, like Jeff Driscoll, is a dual-threat quarterback. Absolutely. Dual-threat, fifth-year senior. A guy that's coming back, a guy that's not scared of the stage, a, a guy that will be comfortable in this offense. So they've got some consistency and they've got some weapons. If they can get in the middle of the field with some crossing routes, some picks, some rubs, some deep slants, uh, some post routes, that kind of thing, they can exploit the deficiencies in Florida's defense, which will be in uh, in the interior of it, right. the safeties, inexperienced safeties, and inexperienced inside linebackers. No Antonio Morrison. Right. You've got Mike Taylor standing in, who's not great in pass coverage. Right. So there are some ways that Toledo can get stuff done in the passing game. So, I, you know, I kind of want to go out on a limb and say when Toledo's throwing the ball, they'll have the advantage uh, against Florida's passing, uh, Florida's pass defense, because even though Florida has stud corners, Marcus Roberson, Lucius Purifoy, that interior of their defense, I think there are some question marks there, right. and Toledo can exploit that. Okay, for uh, most of our fans, they probably don't know, Toledo and Bowling Green are about a 30-minute drive from each other in Ohio. Uh, their big rival 
levels, and they, I think Toledo's really going to attack Florida the way Bowling Green did. There's not going to be a lot of reads for uh, Terrence Owens, T.O., to make. It's going to be take one step and, you know, in, in the gun, and he's going to have his man to throw to. So that's really going to negate what Florida can do as far as a pass rush with the front four. Now, that puts a lot of onus on guys like Michael Taylor, guys like Darren Kitchens, near on ball, to be able to cover those short, quick routes. And, and you know, with Florida in press, it's, it's tough to cover a quick slant. If you press the guy and he makes a quick move, it's, it's tough to stay with him and get, into, and get in front of that passing lane. Now, what about Florida's passing game? Uh, you've got Jeff Driscoll, the emergence of Demarcus Robinson, and Ahmad Fullwood. Quentin Dunbar is back. What about when Florida's uh, throwing the ball? When Florida's throwing the ball, you don't know. Uh, that's that is you know no one knows what to expect from Florida's passing game. I think you can expect better than last year. You have to expect better than last year. Uh, you know Je Jeff Driscoll was in the cellar of the SEC with passing yards per game, uh, attempts per game. You can expect. Uh, Florida to be a bit more productive. They've talked about second year in Brent Peace's office, offense, more familiarity. Uh, they're trying to get more vertical. There are things you can expect. Like I said, you just don't know what you're going to get. So I think that I think that Florida is going to be a bit more proficient in the passing game this year, and I think you'll see it. I think they'll take some deep shots on Saturday, and you'll actually see kind of DeMarcus Robinson, Quentin Dunbar down the field in man coverage, uh, using their physicality and, and their size to their advantage. Right. I think a lot of that is going to have to go down to if Florida can get a little bit of a lead early. I know you don't want to run the score up, but if Florida can get a comfortable lead, you can start trying to mess around with some of those things. Last year, the Bowling Green game was so close for so long that Will Muschamp went into defensive mode, just let's win the game and let's start pounding the rock. And Will Muschamp doesn't care if the, if the win is sexy. He just wants to win. Exactly. Florida's going to do what it takes to win this game. If they come out and they realize, hey, the passing game's not clicking, we're going to do what we did against LSU. We're going to pound the rock two dozen times in a row. They don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, I think the familiarity of being in the offense two years in a row, uh, I, don't, I don't think they're making too much out of that. That is very important to the receivers, to Jeff Driscoll, to the offensive line, to the entire offense. I think Florida, I, I'm going to give Florida an advantage here. Uh, until we see otherwise. Now, let's go with the place-kicking game. Uh, Florida just announced that Austin Harden, a redshirt freshman, is going to be taking over the job. And uh, Toledo has a guy in Jeremiah Detmer, who's going to be a senior this year, has 17 straight field goals made dating back to last year, uh, was 5-5 five of five against Cincinnati when they upset a ranked Cincinnati team last year. Who are you giving the edge here? I'm going to go with Toledo the edge here. Now, that hasn't been the case with Caleb Sturgis of Florida. And that's why I'm going to give Toledo the edge. You know, Austin Harden, it's not a shot at Austin Harden to say he's not going to be or to predict he's not going to be Caleb Sturgis this year. That's not even, you know, discounting the guy. Caleb Sturgis, 24 of 28, was maybe the best offensive weapon Florida had last season and an insurance policy, if anything else. Right. This year, you got Harden stepping in, redshirt freshman, never kicked in a game, you know, there's, there's things that make you kind of uneasy as a Florida fan about Florida's place kicking game. So, you know, I'd have to give the edge to Toledo. you got experience coming back. I think, they, uh, I think they're going to get the check mark in that column. Okay, I'm going to also go the, uh, go the Toledo route just until we see Harden. Uh, you know, he's got a strong leg. He kicked a 58-yarder in high school to win the game, and that was off the ground. In high school, you can use a tee, but he kicked it off the ground 58 yards. So he's got a leg. We just need to see him do it in front of 88,000, not in front of 1,000 in a high school game. But I really want to see with Austin Harden is what happens if he misses the first one. Right. Especially, maybe he, maybe it's not a 50-yarder. Maybe Ex Florida's in Especially close. with Brad Phillips right behind him. Does that get into his head? Yeah, maybe maybe it's in close. Maybe Florida gets it down to the 20, 25-yard line, mm -hmm. and, and Harden's got to kick a 30-yard chipper, and it gets blocked, or it hits off the goalpost. What happens with Austin Harden? Does he go in the tank? Does he kind of, you know, kick himself? <laughs> pun, no pun intended. Kick, kick kickers, himself or? kickers can be head cases, so it will be interesting to see what he does if he misses his first one. Uh, what about going into the punting game? I think this is going to be unanimous. You don't bet against Kyle Christie. Never. Kyle Christie is, you know, he's a very talented punter. Uh, fifth nationally in, uh, in yards per punt last season. Proven factor. You know what you're getting with Kyle Christie. He's going to flip the field whenever Florida is in trouble. And in our last category, we're going to go intangibles and coach. And I know where I'm going with this. Intangibles, orange and blue, playing in the swamp, uh, and and coach uh, Matt Campbell, Toledo's head coach, is actually the youngest coach in FBS at 33 years old. So I'm going to go ahead give this edge to Florida, playing at home in front of the fans. 
uh, won 23 straight games to start the season in this building, uh, and uh, got to give the edge to Florida there. Yeah, uh, Florida gets the edge in this game. Florida's a better team, okay, yeah. and, and we know that. Don't be surprised if Florida doesn't win this game running away. Don't be surprised if it's like last year against Bowling Green when it's, you know, a 10, 13-point victory and, you know, you, you, you're a little uneasy right. coming out of it. Florida is the better team. I think Florida will win. Close to the experts thing. I, I definitely don't think that 23 and a half point spread. If you're a betting man, I would go to Vegas. Not would, that we condone gambling in any way at Gator Country. We might condone gambling. Uh, but yeah, if you're if you are a gambling man, I would go ahead and put your jelly beans down on uh, Toledo to not lose by 24 points. All right, that's uh, that's gonna be it for us tomorrow. Or tomorrow we'll have all the coverage you need from game day. Richard Johnson, Nick Delatori, GCTV.